What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and create this tracks design. Now as always there's links to everything in the description down below so you can go ahead and grab the additional brushes that you may need as well as the palette and the canvas size. Now with this type of design we're going to let the brushes do a lot of the work and we're going to go ahead and trust the process from start to finish which there is merch for in the description down below if you want to go ahead and grab yourself some of that. But it's meant to be a little bit loose don't worry about the details quite so much we're just going to go ahead and chuck in some color have some fun with it and enjoy that painting aesthetic to it. So as always be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram when you're done and if you like tutorials like this I do plenty of them over on my Patreon. I'll throw up the latest three on the screen now if you want to become a Patreon supporter there's a link in the description down below. So with all that said Let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is go to our background color in our layers. If we tap on background color, we're going to want to go ahead and grab this color here. It's the middle color in the fifth column, this nice blue color for the background sky. We're then going to go ahead and get started on our sketch. So we're going to go ahead and first of all, just change your color to black by double tapping at the bottom of the disk. The first thing we need to go ahead and is work out our central point. So if we go up to our actions, we go to the canvas tab and we turn on the drawing guide here and we then edit that drawing guide. We're going to want to go ahead and change the grid size to 153. So 153 and hit done. So just tap on grid size here. You can drag it or you can tap on the little pill there. The color and everything else doesn't really matter. Just keep an eye where that center point is and hit done which is this point here. So for a second, we will just mark that in. And then what I want to do is we're just going to go ahead and just down from that marker in the center, roughly around about three quarters down, we're going to just put a little dash. Now that second dash is where we're going to put our perspective point. So we're using multiple grids and different sort of drawing assists to work out where we want to position the rest of our design. So then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go back to our actions we'll edit the drawing guide. We'll go ahead and go to the option here of perspective. My opacity is set to max and thickness so you can see it in a second. And I'll also set my color at the top here to black. And that second dash that we created, we wanna go ahead and pop our little perspective dot on there. And then hit done when you're done. So the second one in the two dots that we positioned. That's then gonna give us a little bit more space at the top, so a little bit more headspace and then everything else we can try and fit in here at the bottom of the design. Then what we can go ahead and do is with this layer, leave your dots there, that's still fine. So now with our perspective grid on there, we can go ahead and if we tap on the layer and we go to drawing assist, the layer that's got the two dots on, we can start drawing in the rest of our design. Now I want my tracks to somewhat start over here. So this one here, it should almost run perfectly into the corner, but this point here, we're gonna go ahead and just draw a line and because it's drawing assisted, it sticks perfectly to that point. And we'll do the same on the opposite side as well. Bring that all the way into the corner. And then roughly around about sort of halfway down underneath it, we're going to go ahead and draw in another line that runs all the way into that point. Likewise on the other side as well. And they're going to be the metal tracks that the train would run on. So they're going to be filled in with our more metal colours. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is if we take a look at the top of the design, we're going to go ahead and just lightly draw in a sort of line here. So where we've got this one here that points right up into the top left corner, we're going to go ahead and draw in a line that goes down this one all the way into our vanishing point. And likewise on the opposite side, this is going to be the top of the tree. So you've got an idea then for how high we want to go ahead and make that. And then just wide of our tracks, we'll go ahead and draw in a little bit of ground that runs beside the tracks, which is gonna be just here. So if we take a look at our grid lines, they run here, here, and then here. And it's gonna run a line into the corners like so. So with that, if we go ahead and then go up to our actions and we turn off the drawing guide for a moment, you'll be left with this stencil. This actually gives us everything we need in order to lay out our design. So now that we have our sort of guide for today's design, we can then go ahead and start to flush in some of the solid shapes and then we can refine them further on in the tutorial. So we're going to go to our layers and we're going to create a new layer. We'll rename this layer and we will call it ground just to make sure we know what we're referring to. We're going to go to our colors. I'm going to grab the bottom color in the second column from the right, this one here. We're going to go to our brush library. We'll go to painting and we'll use the spectra brush. 
Now the opacity is going to be set to 100% and the size will fluctuate a little bit but about 5% to start with. And these two lines on either side here, the highest ones, are going to be the area that we fill in. So we'll just run along there. You can hold your pen down if you want to to make a perfectly straight line. And you can run as close up to that line as you can. Doesn't matter if it spills over ever so slightly, as long as you sort of run it in towards the corner there. We'll draw in another straight line here. Just hold our pen down for a nice straight line. Run into there, that's good. And then we can just go ahead and fill this in. So I can make my brush eyes a little bit bigger, up to like 10% now. And just run some streaks through here. We'll just quickly get this sort of blocked in a little bit, nice and light to start with. The differences in the brush strokes will just maybe add a little bit of extra tone later on. So don't worry too much about sort of getting this streaky effect. It's not really mandatory. It may just add a little bit of extra color through some of the gaps in the uh, sleepers on the ground. So now we've got that in, for a moment, we're gonna go ahead and grab our stencil and we're gonna drag it above the ground layer so we can still see it. We're then gonna go ahead and tap on the ground layer. We're gonna create another new layer. We'll rename this and we'll call it Rails. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is go to our colors and we'll go ahead and grab the middle color in that second column from the right again, this one here. And then we're gonna go ahead and make our brush size a little bit smaller down to about 3%. And this gap here is our rails that lead all the way down. So we'll go ahead and just lower the opacity down of the stencil so we can see it as a guide, because we need to be able to see the shapes that we're drawing. And we're gonna go ahead and start at the top. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller again. I'm gonna go down to maybe about 2%. And I'm gonna draw in the top of the rail that runs all the way down towards that point. Then I'll go ahead and do the bottom of the rail, maybe making it a little bit taller, that's fine. And we want it to, again, run pretty much all the way down. Now you wanna try and make sure that it doesn't get too thick down towards the bottom there. We will probably thin that out a little bit. And then we're just gonna manually go into here and just paint this in. We want to have a little bit of a manual aspect to it. I don't wanna drop the color in everywhere because then we can get different shades with our pressure and just vary it up a little bit. It's not gonna to be too perfect. The only thing we kind of wanna focus in, the top area of the rail, we wanna make it a little bit darker and then just maybe leave the sides a little bit lighter. But that's not really necessary, just so that you don't have a perfect shape. Let's then do the same over here as well. So we have this line here that runs all the way into the corner up here. So we'll go ahead and draw that in. So we'll just draw that in. I got caught on my sketchboard there. So we'll run that all the way into the distance. And then we'll go ahead and do the exact same over here. Got caught again, didn't I? Little scribble there. Let's run that all the way into the corner, making sure not to try and make our lines any thicker. And then we're gonna go ahead and just color this top area in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my canvas just a little bit because I find it a bit easier to draw from this angle than I do the other. So we'll just block this in again. I wanna keep that nice randomness to it where some streaks are a little bit heavier than others. It works out fine. Either way, just adds a little bit more randomness, just like life is. There's lots of different random colors to everything that we see. So now we've got those in place, let's go ahead then and add in the sleepers. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer right at the very top. We're gonna to go to our colors. We'll go ahead and we'll grab this top color in that column as well, the second column from the right. So top of that column, same brush, but we wanna make it a little bit bigger, maybe up to around about, about 11%. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw in some lines horizontally across the screen. So we wanna make sure there's a bit of a gap at the bottom. We're gonna draw in a horizontal line and pop your finger on the screen. And then we're just gonna keep making horizontal lines that are nice and sort of patterned. So you try and keep your gaps very similar to one another. Doesn't matter if they're ever so slightly different though. So I'm drawing a line, holding it down at the end and popping my finger on the screen to make sure it's nice and straight. Let's do the same here too and just continue until we fill up the entire screen. And these are gonna be our sleepers and we're just gonna distort these in a second. So once you've filled up your screen to here, again, leave a gap at the top and bottom so they don't get clipped in any way. Go to the layer for a second, swipe it to the left and duplicate it and turn off, let's say the top one and then tap on the opposite one. So the one that's visible, tap on it. And so before we distort these lines, let's go to our actions for a second. Let's go to our drawing guide 
and we're going to go ahead and just turn it on and it should be the perspective version so just make sure you go into your drawing guide and use the perspective that we used before. I'm just going to use that as a guide because then I can see these lines and they help us sort of adjust the work that we need to do to these lines of our sleepers. So grabbing this layer here, the bottom one that's turned on, grab your cursor. I'm going to first of all grab the freeform option and just grab the top node and bring it down. Just flatten that right down. I'm also then going to extend this node here to touch the bottom of the canvas. So if you go to snapping and turn that on, it will snap to the bottom of the canvas. And then we're going to go ahead and start distorting this quite a bit. Now, I added this line here with the drawing guide so I can see that center point. And that's going to be quite useful because we need to make sure this node here sits pretty much on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our distort option. We'll bring this node in on the top right and bring that across. We'll go ahead and just bring this corner out a little bit. Again, making sure it touches the bottom of the canvas and then repeat on the opposite side as well. I'm going to bring that node in onto that horizontal line in the middle and then try and adjust this one as well. And then once you sort of points here at top and bottom are on this line in the middle, you know that it matches up perfectly in terms of um, just the angle and it's nice and symmetrical. What we can then do is extend this one out on the right a little bit more, extend that out again, again till that center point there hits that node. And then that's looking pretty good. We've got a nice little bit of overhang on the wood on either side. Arguably a little bit too much, but I think we'll roll with it. It's not too much of a problem. And then if we zoom in, you can see that these points here then need to start to be tucked in even more because of the way the perspective works. These sleepers are gonna get smaller and smaller as they get further away. So I'm just bringing them inwards slightly. And when I hit see that that node here there hits that middle line, I know that they are nicely matching up to the perspective quite a bit. And then if we tap on our cursor when we're done, we've got our front sleepers here. Now if we go ahead and grab that layer and drag it underneath the rails, that will then sit in position. If we then go ahead and grab the extra layer that we duplicated and turned off, swipe that to the left and duplicate it, turn on the bottom one and tap on it, and let's kind of repeat those steps. So we'll go to our cursor first of all. If we go to freeform, let's just scale that down just with the top node just to make it nice and squished. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to continue to flatten this down. And then we're going to go ahead and bring it in from the sides on either side. And now we can start to adjust this to match up as well. So we'll go to distort. We'll try and match up the gap, first of all, at the bottom. And we're going to use that center point line again, just to make sure everything's aligned as it should be. And we'll bring in the nodes to match. So what we're looking for now is we're looking for this line here, the edge of here, to just naturally continue on and just look like it just continues and flows without any sort of things in the way. So as in, it doesn't look like it sticks out in any way in any particular area. It just, it's a seamless line that just runs all the way down. And the whole time we're looking at these nodes here, making sure that they sit on that center point, letting you know you've sort of nicely, evenly spread the lines out on either side. So it's going to take a little bit of adjustment, a little bit of adjustment. I know I need to bring this node in a little bit over here. The top corners here, I'm going to start to pinch them in even more because we need the lines to somewhat now start to get to a point where they just completely disappear. You zoom out, you should be able to get an impression for it and that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to tap on my cursor when I'm done and that's fine. I'm happy with that. So I'll go to my layer and I'll drag it underneath the rails as well. And then they just look like they carry on and on and on. Then what we'll go ahead and do is we will grab that layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and move another version of it up yet again. And we will just do it one more time. So we'll grab freeform, squish it right down. And then we'll bring in the sides. Make sure that it's nice and small. Now you may or may not have to make some adjustments here. They may just naturally just sit in and sort of work out. They don't perfectly, but we'll grab the distort option and just bring that top right node out just a tiny bit. And again, I'm looking at these nodes here, making sure that we can nicely balance them on that center line, making sure then that everything's in position as it should be. And to be honest with you, we're so far in on the design. If you tap on your cursor, 
it doesn't really matter. They are so far in the distance now that they're not really going to be seen too much. So don't stress about that too much. On the same layer, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and continue with the same color and the brush is still the spectra. If we make the brush size really small, about 1%, if not at the smallest 1% because there's different values in there, all I want you to do then is just draw in horizontal line after horizontal line all the way up towards the top. It doesn't matter if the gaps are perfect. Look how pixelated it is. We are so far down the tracks, it doesn't even matter. And we're just going to draw in a whole bunch of horizontal lines. Some of them may get really close to each other. I like that. It may be where one of them is slightly higher and it's just, you know, slightly on a different bit of ground that's raised up over time. Something like that. And you can see there that some of them are getting so close together, it's almost like a big block of color. And again, these lines here at the end, they're so close together because they're so far away, it doesn't really matter. We're just drawing in horizontal line after horizontal line and just getting the final bits. And now I'm just gonna freehand it and just draw in lots and lots of horizontal lines. And then just go over it a few times just to sort of add in a few light streaks with the paintbrush to just sort of, you kind of collapse the detail down by doing that. So you zoom all the way out and we've got all of our tracks ready to go. Let's then go ahead and add in the trees. So once we've got all of our basic shapes, we can go to town on adding in lots of different things that we need to make it all come to life. So if we go to our layers, we're gonna go ahead then and create a new layer. And we can go ahead and move this. Let's move it just underneath our sleepers and above our ground. We'll rename this layer and we'll call it trees. And then we'll go ahead and on this layer, we're gonna to go to our colors and grab the color in the top left of the palette. We're gonna to go to our brush library. And for you, it will be under imported. Likewise, it is for me too. And we're gonna go ahead and use the leatherwood edited by myself, number two at the end. And the opacity wants to be 75%. And the initial size wants to be around about sort of the 6% marker. Now we do need to make sure that if we go to our layers and we turn on our stencil, it's still turned on here. But if we go to our actions for a moment and turn off our drawing guide, because those lines are very bold, I can now see the height that my trees need to be in. Now what this brush will do is if I run a stroke up and down here, for example, it's going to randomly scatter in some color. Now what we're trying to do, and I'll show you, is if I fill in an area quickly here, that's at 75% because of course the opacity is there. And then what we're going to do is, is overlap it and overlap it and overlap it until it builds up a lot of color and a lot of forest. Now bear in mind, we're only going to use this larger size just around this sort of first portion of it. And then we're going to scale the brush down and fill in the rest as it gets further down. Now, I don't want you to go all the way up to this line. We want to leave a little bit of headroom. So really, we want to go up to kind of here and leave this headroom here. So let's get started. Let's go ahead. The brush size is 6% and we're going to go ahead and just run the brush up and down, filling in this front area up to these sort of points here you can see. And then I'm going to stop once I've sort of blocked in a good chunk here. Don't worry if it's a little extra bit there because I accidentally pressed again, that's fine. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side and get a gauge for the height on both sides, making sure it's nice and balanced. So I'm going to go up and down here, fill that in. I'm going to block it in towards the bottom and I may even leave this one a little bit sort of skinnier, not so sort of blocked in like that side. Then we're going to go ahead and reduce the brush size down. Let's go down to about 3% and we're going to continue making little sort of uh, bushes all the way down towards the very, very bottom. So we're going to go ahead and start over here. And you want to kind of start to separate some of your strokes up and down as if you were creating individual trees, uh, but accidentally, essentially, letting the brush just be nice and random and run all the way down as far as you can. You can see I'm going up to the ground, but not too close. I'll do the same over here. So I'm going to create like a lots and lots of sort of areas of tree where I can start to work with them later on. So just sort of little points at the top, which we will use. And then I'm going to go ahead and reduce the brush size down again. And I've gone down to about 1% now. And that's probably a little bit too small. You're probably going to want to use a 2% for this one. And then we'll go down here and continue all the way down towards the vanishing point of our design. And I'm going to reduce the brush size down to that 1% now and just fill in a little bit of detail towards that bottom edge, making sure it nicely touches the ground all the way along. Just making sure that that does 
what it should do. We don't want our trees to be floating. I'm just going to fill that in a little bit, make sure we get that tree line all the way into the distance. But again, zoom out. This is all we're trying to create at this point, just the trees on either side. Then what we'll go ahead and do is go back to our brush size around about maybe 5% this time and we'll layer it on top. So starting at the bottom, we're going to go ahead and layer on top. And your goal is to maybe leave a little bit of the top area of the trees with the original color and tone and then just leave it because we're trying to create all the different variations in color that a forest and a set of trees would have. So by running this brush all the way up to the top and then up towards the back of this one as well, we're going to leave some color. You can block it in at the bottom quite strong. That's fine. But towards the top, you want those sort of variations in the color. Reduce your brush size down to maybe around about the 3% mark and continue that further down as well. So just like vertical streaks, leaving in some of the original color. And I'll just let that run all the way down a little bit like so. See how easy that is just sort of pointing it down in towards that corner, into the corner. Make sure the bottom row is a little bit stronger in terms of the amount of color used and block that in. That's what we want to do. And then we're going to do it one more time. So we're going to go back to our brush around about five or six percent and go over the top once more. Now this may be fairly dark at this point, so you may not see too much change, but that's a good thing. That means we've done everything perfectly up until now. So we've got our trees now on either side. Let's now go ahead and start to adjust them. So if we go to our brush library, we go into vintage and we use the rad brush. The brush size is going to be set to about 3%. And we're going to create some trees. Now, this is actually really simple. All I want you to do is use that guideline of our stencil and draw in a straight line down. Hold your pen down if you want to, to create a nice sort of vertical line. And then we're going to go ahead and create some trees. You can go above the line just so that they are nice and sort of varied from one another. And I'll create another one here. And then I'll take a look at all the sort of bumps and lumps that the brush that we previously used created and I'll utilize that. So I'll run into this little clump of color here and I'll do the same here as well. I'll create another tree. It can go slightly above the line and we'll make one a little bit further down, but nothing too big. So a little bit smaller, this one will be. Take a look at it. Try not to sort of position them too repetitively. Mine are a little bit repetitive over there, but maybe I'll come back and add in an extra one. I'm gonna add in a larger tree here on the right this just goes above the line. I can see I've got a clump of color here, so I've got a good space here to be adding in another tree. I'll add in another one here. And then we'll go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and chuck one in this gap, but also one here as well. So maybe just a little bit taller there. And then I've got this big gap here because we didn't end up putting any color in there and that's fine. I'll, I'll draw a line there and I'll add a tree. That'll fill that in nicely. And I'll draw in another one maybe there with another one in the distance down here. So all these straight lines now are sort of the trunks of your trees. Now just taking a look quickly, I can see that that one's fairly high. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the height of this one just a smidge. And like I said, they are the trunks of our trees. And to fill them in, it's really easy, super easy. All you need to do, start at the top of one of your trunks, go left to right and just get wider as you go down and you'll create a tree. And then those colors will blend into those darker tones that we created before. So here at the top, I'll just start really skinny, build that out, get really, really big towards the bottom. You can make it, you know, be a bit more exaggerated if needs be. The only thing I recommend you do is with one of them as you go, or all of them, should I say, is just fill in the center just a little bit more. So just make sure the center of the tree is nice and dense. And then the outer areas can be nice and sort of uh, thin with the branches that we're creating. So I've got this tree here on the left. Just gonna zigzag down it all the way down and fill that in. I can maybe make some just run astray a little bit more like so. I've got a gap there that I may come back to and fill in because these trees are really close to us. Maybe even I'll make this one up to the guideline and redo it. So start at the very top, make it a little bit wider. I like to keep those kinds of things in the video so you understand what it is I'm looking for so you can maybe reflect that in your own work. We've got more trees down here. So again, all we do is zigzag all the way down the tree until it runs down into the colors that we created underneath. And I'm just gonna make sure the center of the tree is nicely blocked in. 
Now I do have a bit of a gap here and I do want to make sure that that's blocked in. So I will go ahead and draw in another straight line. And I'll go ahead and just chuck in another tree in that gap. Just like so. Just to create less of the sort of formation and pattern all the way down. Let's then go ahead and fill in this one here. Making that a little bit wider towards the base and that's fine. I've got another tree down here. And we'll go ahead and just zigzag that all the way down. And then I'm going to make my brush size a bit smaller as we go further down here to about 2%. And I'm going to go ahead and just try and draw in a few trees so that the forest, as you do get further down, is, does resemble a forest in the distance. We just don't want to add in too much detail. That's my concern. We don't want to add in too much detail all the way back there. It's not really part of our focal point. So reverting my brush back to the 3% size, I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. We go down the tree, getting progressively wider as you go. Let's make this one nice and big because it's really close to us. I'm going to make sure the center of it is nice and dark by giving that a couple more runs up and down. And then just repeat that all the way down our sides of our tracks, filling in our little forest. So then I'm just going to block in the center again, giving that a little bit more color because this is the basic shape and we're going to go ahead and add in some colors on top of these shapes that we draw now. So it's really important that your trees you're happy with right now and that they are nice and chunky and full to the point where we can then go ahead and chuck some color on and it's got something to stick to. So I'm going to go ahead and just zigzag that one in as well. Make sure it's nice and blocked in. This one here is going to be a bit of a struggle to try and define a little bit, but that's okay. A little something like that. Just about do it. And these trees are getting further away from us, so it doesn't really matter too much. They're getting further away, therefore we don't really want to make them super crispy. Block this one in as well. And if you see any big gaps in your trees, just make sure in the initial layer that we created, you can maybe just go in and just block them in. I'm going to go ahead and reduce my brush size down to about 2 or 1% and just add in those tiny little extra trees that we were talking about right in the distance. And likewise, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the bottom area of the trees, make sure they get really close to the tracks because that is all gonna slowly just merge into one right at the very end there. And again, when you zoom all the way out, it doesn't really matter. So I'm happy with the randomness of both sets of those trees. They've got a good amount of balance to them in terms of height, but there's good gaps in there that can give me nice uh, options and areas to add some color to. So that is everything we need now to get started with the whole of the design, the lighting and everything else. So while we're working on the trees, I'm going to stick on them. So we're going to go ahead and go to our layers. Now I'm going to create a new layer first of all, and tap on it and clip it to the trees. We're going to go ahead and add in some color and I just want to make sure it's on a separate layer in case I want to revert or change anything later on. Now I'm going to jump straight to the third color on the top row. Continuing with the rad brush, maybe a little bit bigger, about 8%. We're going to go ahead and take a look at these trees. Now the lighting's coming across from the top left across and it's going to hit these trees. These are going to look really good. And then what we're going to do is we need to slowly identify some of these trees all the way down. So you're going to have to use your imagination, especially when we get into this area down here. But we're going to go ahead and just block in some of this color on this side of the tree. Now this is essentially a shadow color. It's just like not quite our brightest tone yet. So I'm still following this tree down. Just imagine there's a diagonal line that runs all the way down the side here. And then we can just draw in some lines of branches, nothing too detailed, nothing too crazy. Just little bits of color. And I'm just gonna literally just zigzag that all the way down into this space here. And what that kind of does there, you can almost see the outline of this tree come together a lot more. I'm gonna add in a little bit more color and then repeat that all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead and go down the left side of this tree here, just real quick and easy. Leave a little bit of that darkness between this tree and that tree. Therefore, your brain sees that separation. Now, before I move to this tree, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my colors, go to the first color in the palette, top left, go back to the original trees layer and fill in some of these gaps. If you've got too many grays in there, it won't work quite well. So we just wanna make sure, that, especially the, any white tones, down here. So I'm just going to block them in a little bit better like so. 
and then go back to the same color. So colors, third color on the top row, go back to the layer that's clipped to it and continue down. So as your trees get slowly smaller and smaller all the way down, you just need to bear that in mind, of course. And some of the colors will slowly but surely just bunch together. So I'm just adding in a bit of color on this tree here. And that's fine if all the colors slowly start to bunch. I like that because it all gets crushed in the distance anyway. I've got a tree here and I'm going to go ahead and sort of in my mind put that a little bit further back so it will get very close color wise to this one. This one here looks like it definitely sticks out a little bit more so I can give this a lot more color and go all the way down whereas that one again looks like it's a little bit further back maybe even in the sort of shadow of this one so it's not going to get quite so much love. We'll go down these trees and just letting that rad brush do all the work all the work all the way down and when you get all the way down to sort of these trees down there right in the distance chuck that color in be nice and brave and then when you zoom out i can now start to see how that forest is going to start to evolve um, i can go ahead and make some of these oranges brown colors just come down a little bit more but i can see all that color now we are going to go ahead and go over to this side though and add the same sort of uh sort of logic to this side as well even though the light's coming from the left hand side I want the darker side to still have some of those nice golden brownie colors on the side. So starting with the first tree here, I'm just going to go ahead and block this in, running all the way down, pressing quite firm with the rad brush so I can get some nice big patterns of color that chuck in. That tree definitely looks like it's further back than this one. So they've kind of merged together in their color set. Whereas this one here looks like it's definitely got a good amount of space on it. So it can run all the way down here and not sort of merge into another tree and we do want to go ahead and on this side anyway just add a little bit on the left as well so both sides of the trees are going to get a little bit of color on the top only because that lighting is going to clip the top of the trees it's going to look really beautiful I've got another tree there in the background I'm just going to cover that in the brown there got another tree here letting that run all the way down just zigzagging all the way down trying to see where the shapes are and just chucking in some color on the right side of the, what would be the tree all the way down and then just blocking that color as it makes its way down towards the end of the tracks. Now this tree here, I just want to make sure because it's quite separated that I add a good amount of color on the left side of it as well, because it is separated. You can see both sides of the tree. It's going to block some more color in there. And those trees now have their basic colors on as well. Let's then go to our colors and let's start being more brave with the colors that we add. So we're going to move across and we're going to grab the fourth color on that top row. We're going to take a look at this side of the trees again, and we're going to go over the top of some of those tones that we added, just dashing in some of this color. Now, as we get progressively lower, I want you to start to, with the lighter colors, not quite go so low with them. We want to go ahead and just let the darker tones live towards the bottom and these much warmer, brighter tones live towards the top. So I've scribbled down this edge and then just added a couple of dashes where maybe some of the branches are getting some extra love from the light. So we'll zigzag down here on top of the work we've already done. So we're not doing anything new other than the odd occasional little dash in the tree here and there where there's some lighting catching on a branch. Go down this edge as well. Down here, dash, dash occasionally. A couple of branches getting some color scribble down here so it's really easy the brush is going to do all the work it's going to layer on top lots and lots of tones lots and lots of color and all we're responsible for is making sure it just sits in the right spot that's all it will go ahead and decide where exactly on the tree it's going to live so i blocked that in quite a bit down there towards the bottom and you can see now that that side's getting a lot more light a lot more of this lovely burnt orange color now on this side it is the shaded side here so we don't want to now start to add in the color any further down after this one. So we can go ahead and just add in a little bit of color towards the top edges, but nothing too low. We need to be even higher now with our color. So a little bit on these edge of the branches and now more so on the left side of the tips of the trees where that light is definitely going to be hitting that top edge of the trees. I'm going to block in some of this color in here because I've got that separated gap. I'm going to add some to that tree in the background there as well. A little bit on there too. And in here, maybe the odd little branch with a little bit of colors fine. But that's it. 
I wouldn't go ahead and add in any more. This side here is not getting quite so much love from the sun. And then as you make your way down, you just want to sort of clip the top of the trees with this color. Just clip the top of it all the way up and down. We've got more colors to add, so we're going to go to our colors. We're going to move across and we're going to slowly start to get into the brighter tones now. So we're on the fifth color on the top row. This side over here, let's start chucking in some color. Again, the first color went all the way down to the bottom. The second color went down to about here. And then this next color is going to sit even higher. So we're not going to go even lower this time again. So I'm just going to scribble on some color, add in the odd dash on the side of the tree where again a branch is getting some light here and there. That's fine. See little specks like that. That'll be great. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this tree across a little bit. So I've gone on top of some of those branches there just a little bit and just zigzagging in some of these nice lighter tones. They're slowly going to somewhat look a bit smudgy together and I really liked it in my practices for this. It looks great. So we're going all the way from the top, chucking in some color on the back of the tree as well is fine. I'm gonna go down this tree, chuck in some color on the back. And again, we'll go down here, dashing in some color, dashing in. The odd little sort of speck in behind is great. And then as you get further down, just clip the top of the trees, that's fine. Just clip it with the brighter tone. So that side now, you can start to see the change in how the trees are looking. What I am gonna do is be very, very light and just chuck in a little bit of color down here, just a tiny bit, where it's just the odd little leaves or of the branches, should I say, um, that are just catching some light. And that will just bring the lighting down the trees a bit more. We do want this to be quite a dark sort of foresty look towards the bottom, so you can't see the forest ground. But the odd little tiny little dash here and there will look great. And it will just bring, bring the color down bring some of the branches down as well. And I'll do the same over here too. Just a couple of little scrapes on this tree here that's really close to us. And because it is the closest to us, adding in these extra little dashes here and there, it will give it far more definition because it's a lot closer. Then let's move across to the left side. Start dashing in the top left corners of the trees. So the top left edges, just scribble in some of that color on the tops of the trees, that's fine. I'm going to chuck some on the edge of here as well, just up and down the far edge. Likewise here too. In this gap here, this tree definitely looks to me like it's a little bit further back. So I'm going to chuck some color on there. I'll chuck some color on here too. This one here as well. And a little bit on top of this, whatever that is. It's another tree, but it's not quite defined. And again, just to kiss the top edge, just the top edge. So you're starting to see a real change now in how this set of trees are starting to look a little bit darker and that side's really coming to life with all of their colors. Let's move to our colors and move across one more. So we've now got the, uh, it's the final set in this top set of six. And we're gonna take a look at our trees. And again, not going anywhere near towards the bottom now, we're just gonna chuck in some of this yellow tone towards the top a bit more. So I'm scribbling down the same lines that I've been doing for my trees every single time. So down those edges, the odd little dash towards the back of the tree. Nothing new here, so you can probably mute me at this point if you're fed up of hearing me repeat myself. But uh, just the odd little dash in behind. Scribble down, scribble down, and then kiss the top of the trees as you get further down towards the back. And then we've got all of these beautiful, beautiful colors in the trees. The odd little dash again, if we go back in and just, just add in the odd little speck here and there. This one over here the closest to us, we definitely need to look at some of the oranges we've added previously and just see if we can just layer on a little bit of yellow. It will just help those branches come to life even more, like a little something like that. So with that done, the next step is to then add in some further highlights on top. Now I wanna create a second layer for this. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna tap on the layer and clipping mask it. I'm gonna to go to my colors and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here. So I'm gonna grab the uh, middle color in the seventh column. And these are gonna be our brightest tones. They're gonna sit at the top of the left trees and the very top of these trees as well. So I wanna put it on a separate layer because if we press too firm in certain areas, we can lower the opacity. But same rules apply. You're adding it purposely towards that left edge, trying to kiss the top of these trees here quite a bit. So just dashing in some of these much brighter tones on the trees. And this is where I'm trying to be a bit more specific and just try to make sure I get it right on that left edge 
because the lighting's just making its way over the left hand side trees on top of these ones here. So I'm just going to chuck in some colour on them. And now I'm going to be a bit more careless. I'm just going to get a little bit more free with chucking on the colour, especially as they start to get further back again. Same rules apply basically, but I just don't want you to do it on the same layer in case you press a little bit firm and then therefore you're stuck with that level of highlights. We can adjust them later on if need to be. But these are going to end up with these lovely little highlights on that top edge. Lovely little highlights. And then again, just kiss the trees as you make your way down. Just the odd little catch on some of them will look great. And then the odd little dash again on some of them will look awesome. Just try to smudge in some of these lovely highlight tones on some of your branches that you can see. And again, especially when you come back here after that and just see some of these branches here, the odd little speck of colour will look great. A little something like that. If we then move across to this side, we're going to go ahead and lighten up the left edge. It's going to lighten up the left where the lighting's just peeking round. And you can highlight the right edge as well, just to sort of show that the light's really crashing onto the top of this tree all the way around it. You can catch some on the, the right side too, into down into this gap as well. Scribble in on top of the, the tops of them on that left edge, but not too far down. Again, we want that lighting to come across and this is shaded, whereas this is going to end up with some lovely highlights, especially later on when we do add the highlights. So that's our trees done for a moment. The next step is to go ahead and then add in some shadows on the ground here just to finish them off. So just above our ground, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors and grab the first color in the palette, top left. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go to painting and the spectra brush again. And with your brush, you want to make it around about that two to three percent mark. And just down here, just run some streaks so that you just kind of fade out the bottom area of the forest a little bit. So a little bit something like this. Now, what you're going to potentially have to do, just like me, is if I go to my layers and go to my trees layer, go to my eraser, tap on the eraser and use the painting brush of Spectra. Go back to your layers and if you drew something like I just did, just turn off that layer for a moment. But your trees, they're potentially a little bit too close to the tracks. So we're just going to go ahead and the brush size can be any size, but about 3%. We're just going to slowly just sort of push them back a little bit before we add these shadows in. We don't want them hanging over the side of the tracks or anything like that. We want that clear separation between the ground layer that we created and the trees. But in a second, we'll add a shadow just to sort of tie them in a bit closer. And look how much neater that looks than this side because we've got our bottom of our trees on this side just running a little bit right and over towards our ground layer. So I'm just going to make sure that the angle matches up. Take away some of it in the distance as well. Just streak away a little bit like so. Now for a minute, we've pushed them quite far back, which is good. Let's then go ahead and go back to the layer that we created a second ago that I introduced and turn it back on if you did draw something just like me. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap on mine actually and clear it so I can start again. I'm going to go to my brush. We should still be the spectra and let's just go ahead now and just fade out the bottom edge over here. So we're just going to sort of run some streaks all the way down towards the end there. That's fine. We don't want any of that blue sky layer to come through, but we do want to just sort of create a bit of a shadow where the forest just makes its way really close towards the tracks and that's it. And then we're just going to want to go ahead and repeat that on this side as well. So we're just going to darken up the underside of the trees, making sure it just nicely fades out onto the ground beside our tracks. So just you may have to go in and darken up a few spots a little bit further back, maybe about a 2% and just darken them up as they get a little bit closer. An overlap is fine. Just as long as it doesn't get too close to our sleepers and so that you end up with a nice random amount of shadow there. Now the next stage we're going to move on to is just adding some texture to the ground underneath our uh, little tracks there. So we're going to go to our ground layer. I'm going to create a new layer and on this layer we're going to go ahead and go to our colors. We're going to use a couple of these colors over here. So I'm going to grab this color here, the bottom right color in the palette. I'm going to go ahead and go to my brush library. I'm going to go back to Vintage and the Rad Brush. Just in between our tracks, or well, our sleeper, sorry, we're going to go left to right. Now I'm going to make the brush size back up to about 13% this time. And just literally 
zigzag it in between. I want these to be the stones and pebbles and whatever else has been put in between here. And you can scribble that all the way down towards the back. It really doesn't matter. Just chuck some random variations in the ground in between our sleepers. Then go to your colors and grab this color, the bottom of the third column from the right, this one here. And again, just go over the top now. You may wanna go ahead and make your brush about 19% and just run this horizontally through these gaps. And this will just give us a little bit of texture in there. Now for the minute, this may be a little bit bright and that's fine, it will get toned down later on anyway, because we're gonna add shadows on top. It's just trying to add in that nice stony texture that's probably running in between all of the sleepers. All the way off to the left. And just add in a few dashes here and there. Now before we carry on, I also want to go to my colours. I want to go ahead and grab this colour here at the bottom of the third column. And just where our shadows were and on the edge, I just want to sort of draw in a little bit of green. A little bit of green as if there's just a bit of grass just right beside the tracks over here just that tiny little bit of green let that run all the way down as well just little random patches of green that just make their way in from the edges will look good this is meant to be quite loose on this style style should i say let's then go ahead and start to work on the wood itself so our layers now we've got three layers that are all of our tracks all the way down let's go ahead and pinch all three of those into one layer we'll go ahead and create a new layer above it Tap on it and clip it to the actual sleepers. We're then gonna to go to our brush library. We'll go ahead and grab this color here in the top right to start with. Make sure our brush is then set back to painting and the spectra brush. And with a maybe about 2%, if not slightly bigger than that, we can go up to about sort of three or four. We're gonna go ahead and create the side of the wood here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a line all the way across horizontally and just draw in the shaded side, the 3D-ness of the log will now come to life, or the sleeper. So we'll block that in, and then repeat that all the way along. So we'll just draw along with a nice straight line, and just draw that in. Some of the perspectives on the edges won't work fully yet, but we can chop off the edges later on. Reduce the brush size as you get further back, and just slowly but surely start to just darken up all of the edges, making sure you keep them a little bit consistent, they also don't need to be perfectly straight. Some of them can be a little bit wobbly up and down where the wood's maybe warped over time, that's fine. Just add a nice bit of age into it. And then just continue that all the way back. Now, when you start to get to the ones a little bit further back and they're a little bit more condensed, you're not gonna have the space to do it and that's fine. It's not something to force in there. It's just try to add it in where necessary, but the ones that are getting a little bit further back here, I really don't have the space, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. So don't fight it once you can't add it. Then let's go ahead and go to our layers. Let's go down a layer to the actual objects themselves and tap on it and alpha lock it. Let's then go to our colors. Let's then move to the third color in the top right. So the third color in from the right hand side, this one here. And with our spectra brush again, maybe around 2%, we're just going to be really nice and light with some extra bit of sort of brown color on the top edge here. So I'm just going left to right, purposely left to right, so we can streak in some of this color. And I'm focusing it a little bit more towards the right hand side. So where the wood is, just getting a little bit of the light potentially. We're going to add shadows over here later on. Little few dashes on the edge is fine as well. Likewise over here as well. And all we're doing is just very streaky sort of look to the top edge. Just trying to add in a little bit of extra color, build up some tones and go across. Now, again, when we get a little bit further back to here, it's fine. All we want to do is then maybe is just zigzag all the way down towards the back. That's all. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Don't stress. You'll create lots of cool different tones making their way towards the very back edge. Make sure we just get a little bit of love on these sleepers on the edge. And there we go. We've added in some nice streaky looks to the top edges. Let's then go to our colors again. Let's then move to this color here. So it is the uh, bottom color in the fifth column. Brush size still around that 2% mark and we're gonna add in some more streaks. And these are gonna be a little bit more pronounced with a little bit of extra color and keep them nice and sort of horizontal, but they can be nice and random. They don't have to be perfect. And focus them again a little bit more towards that right edge. This side over here is gonna have a shadow on it shortly. So I'm just gonna 
drop in some of this color on our tracks, keeping it nice and easy, nice and simple, nice and straightforward. And then when I get to this point, I'm not gonna go ahead and chuck any color down there. It looks quite nice as it is. This is just meant to be those extra little tones on the wood. Next, let's go ahead and add in some shadows to the actual ground. So if we go to our layers, it's kind of related to our sleepers. So if we'll create a new layer, we'll go ahead and drag it down and we'll go ahead and put it just straight underneath our sleepers there. It may clip itself to the trees, so make sure you tap on it and unclip it. It just needs to sit underneath. We're gonna to go to our colors and go to the color in the top left of the palette. Same brush still, about 3%. And with the lighting coming across, we wanna first of all darken up underneath the rails where it's creating a gap on the ground. So we're just gonna darken up under there and blend it out to the, the right. So we'll do that all the way across. So blend that out. That one's probably a little bit too big. So I can put the color in underneath the rail and then blend it out. Color underneath and blend it out and just sort of streak that in a little bit more so like this. And then we can go ahead and maybe even make our brush size about 4% and just sort of run in a shadow like this. Just sort of run it in really, really light with the pressure. Start to build up those colors from that edge. Those nice little shadows. Then reduce your brush size down to about 2% again. And just behind these sleepers here, probably a bit bigger than that, maybe about 3%. Just chuck in some color in behind here and nicely darken up behind them. So darkening them up behind each one, adding in a shadow where it's just touching the ground. And as you get further back, you're gonna run out of space as always. So as you get further back up to here, reduce your brush size down to something really small, maybe around 1% and see if you can get some streaks in here. If you can't, just streak left to right and just take out a little bit of that color. Just streak all the way up and down towards the back. Most definitely as well, underneath your rails as well. I'm just gonna increase the brush size up to about 2% and just go down that edge again, just creating that shadow on that side. And we should have added a lot more depth to the design. Let's also then make sure that the shadows just run across as well, underneath this rail over here. We also need to add a shadow to this rail as well. Just making sure that they just run across. So let's go ahead and just right underneath it, nothing too sort of spread out, just darken up underneath it just a little bit. That's fine. Here at the front, we most definitely need to add in a shadow as well. So we'll just increase the brush size to about 3% and probably just darken this up with a straight line across because it's pretty close to us. We want to make sure it's quite crispy in terms of its details. And that should do it. That should be all of the details we need to add for the shadows at this particular stage on the center point. Let's just add in a tiny bit over here. So underneath the edges is something I missed. So just a little 2% just underneath those edges. And just little dashes, just little scribbles. Don't, don't be sort of too particular over it. Just chuck it in. And then in contrast, I'll just add in a little bit more color over here as well. So that's now a nice little extra shadow that's really brought that sort of scene together a bit more. But we do have shadows that would be casted on top of them as well. So we'll go to our layers. We have a clipped layer to the sleepers, this one here with all the wood colors. We're gonna create a new layer, tap on it and clip it as well. So we've got the sleeper, the colors that we added, and then we've got another new layer. And then just where our rail is, we're gonna go ahead and with our brush size around that two to 3% mark, we're just gonna darken up on the top edge here. So just blend out towards the right and just add in a little bit of a shadow right next to the rail and just blend it out towards the right. Don't be too particular over it. We've got more colors to add onto the rail as well in a second. So that will make it look like it fits the scene a little bit more. And then just little scribbles of darkness just on the edge. And you can go all the way down if you want with like a straight line. Hold your pen down and just adjust that line. You see this line here? And just let that get really close to the rail. And you can just blend that out towards the right hand side as much as you wish. So just blend that out like so. And we'll just add a tiny bit of darkness on the opposite side as well. Just a little bit in behind there. Move across to this side. Now this wouldn't really cast a shadow quite as much but we will go ahead and make a 2% brush stroke and just over here just underneath it a little bit just like so and maybe just feather it out just a tiny bit with some really light strokes. A little something like this but it would cast a shadow over to the right in a minute based on the lighting so 2% in behind it and just darken up behind the rail. 
darkening that up, moving that across. And again, when it gets further back, we're not too interested in the details because they disappear. So now you should have a lot more shading, make the whole scene look a lot more 3D rather than a quite flat design. Let's then go ahead and add some colors to the rails. So we're gonna to go to our rails. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer above it. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab the middle color here in the third column from the right. So this one here, same brush still. And the first thing we'll do is with about 2%, we're just gonna go ahead and just draw in a line all the way down towards our point. Now hold your pen down so you get a nice straight line. Then you can pivot the line and we're kind of just covering the top edge of the rail. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in another one just beside it and just thicken up that top edge of the rail like so. And just streak that in so you can see that top edge in comparison. Do the same on the opposite side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in this side here. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw in a straight line all the way down, hold my pen down, let that run all the way into the distance. And then the gap here that I left on the right, I can go ahead and just add in a streak of color along. And again, I don't want them to be perfect. I don't want them to be one solid color. There's like two tones in there. I love that streakiness. It looks, it makes it look nice and random and just a lot more realistic. But this one over here on the left, we are gonna to go to our colors and on the same layer, we're just gonna grab the color in the top left of the palette. Just increase your brush size to about 5% and give it one sort of stroke over the top. I want the top edge of the rail to be present, but it's in the shade. So I don't want it to be as bright as this side. So I've just given it a light stroke over the top just to take away some of that tone. Next, let's go ahead and just adjust some of the colors again on the sleepers, just so we can start to, again, further refine as we go. So we're gonna to go to the sleeper layer. It's alpha locked, so we can't paint outside of it. We're gonna to go to our brush library. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this middle color in the third column from the right. With my brush size maybe set to about 3%, I'm just gonna really lightly just gloss over the right hand side here a little bit, just streak in some slightly lighter streaks of color. So just really trying to change the color angle, making sure it's a little bit more worn, but also the color sits a bit more towards that right hand side. So that's a really light change, but you should see some speckles of sort of that lighter color in the actual wood. We'll then go ahead and reduce our brush size down to about 1% and then just purposely add in some more lines in the wood itself. So just streaking them across, adding in some extra color and they can go more over to the left now because we know where our shadows are, so that's fine. And we're just streaking in some of these extra tones and all of these tones are just building up on top of each other. We're creating lots and lots of detail and randomness to the colors. Again, when it gets too far back, don't worry about it too much. You can maybe go ahead and just add in some streaks just on the edge of the wood over here. On those edges, a little something like that. And again over here, we'll just add in a few little streaks of color. And if it shows, it shows. Based on our shadows, it may not, and that's fine. So we've got some more wood texture in there. The next step is just to add in the sky, and then we can get into lighting and some final adjustments. So we'll go to our layers. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer and drag it all the way down in front of our background color. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab this color here. It is the uh, sixth column, middle color. With the spectra brush again, with your brush size fairly large, maybe around about that 10% mark, if not slightly larger, maybe around about 11 or 12. We're just gonna to wanna to go ahead and just sort of very lightly with your pressure. I've rotated my canvas because it's a little bit easier for me. I'm gonna just add in a little bit of orange in the distance. And then I'm really, really light with my pressure. I'm gonna focus a little bit more of the lighting in this sort of area here and just let the sky fade out. So we're creating like a really streaky sky, but trying to focus a little bit more of the oranges towards the left and a little something like this. We're just adding a little something in the sky, some extra details and reduce the brush size down to about 6% then so you can be a little bit more particular with where you then drop the color in. Those larger streaks then give you sort of where to chuck in the color. Then we're gonna to go to our colors and switch it out to the color just beside it. So the uh, slightly lighter variation of it, it's the middle color in the seventh column and just add in some streaks of this as well across the sky and you can add it sort of towards the right hand side of the screen a little bit more. And then you've got a nice sort of amount of orange just making its way in. And you can bring it over here as well, just streak it across, 
the sun is going to sit over here and just make its way across the sky. So now we've done that, let's add in some of the lighting effects. If we go right to the top of our layers, you can delete this sleeper layer now that all the lines that we had turned off, you can delete that now. You can also go ahead and turn off your stencil and delete it if you're concerned about your layers. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and continue with the same color we've got. I'm going to go to my brush library. I'm going to go to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. We're going to make the brush size nice and large, probably around about, what's that, about 40, so nearly, nearly about 35%. And just over here on the trees, I'm going to go round in a circle and just draw in a really light haze of color. Really light, but focusing it a little bit more in this area here. And that can stretch across the sky a little bit. Then go to the layer and change the blend mode from normal and change it to overlay. That will then start to brighten up some of those colors on top of that tree set there. We're then going to go ahead and go to our layers and create another new layer. We're going to continue with the same color, but we're going to change our brush and we're going to go to the option of luminance, it will be called for you, and the flare brush. The size wants to be nice and large, about 80 to 90%. And we're going to want to go ahead and tap just here, just in behind some of these trees. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap up here and you'll get that flare run across. Now immediately, that doesn't look like much. But if we go to our layers and we change the blend mode from normal and we change it to overlay, you'll get that nice, beautiful beam that runs across the sky and the sun's just peeking in. Now, I want to go ahead and just grab my cursor and just move it off to the left a little bit more so it's definitely coming in from behind the trees and tap on my cursor. We then need to make some adjustment to these trees. So we go to our layers. We go down to world to where the trees are. And we have two clipped layers to it. If we create another new layer, we tap on the layer and we clipping mask it. We'll go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to, again, overlay. We'll then go to our brush library. We'll go to airbrushing and the soft brush. The brush size can be reduced a little bit now though, to about 20% just for accuracy. And the top of these trees, just give them a nice coat towards the top edge and they will really brighten up in color and just really add in a good solid amount of color towards the tops of them. That way, they really do look like their light is coming across, crashing onto them, and you've got this beautiful amount of color. It's really been emphasized now. And also now your shadows and area of shadow look a little bit more dull on purpose. Then what we'll go ahead and do though, is go to our layers, and we're gonna go back up towards the top, just underneath that big glow we added on the left-hand side there. We're gonna create a new layer, change the blend mode also from normal to overlay. Reduce the brush size down again, maybe down to about sort of 10%. And just this edge of the tracks, I'm just going to be really light. I'm going to reduce my brush size down again, sorry, down to about 7%. And just brighten up a little bit of this right-hand side of the tracks. Just as if there was a little bit of lighting, just maybe peering through. You could, if you want to, just reduce your brush size down to about 4% and like really brighten up an area where maybe it's coming through the trees and stuff onto the tracks and there is getting a little bit of light in those areas. I think that'll look really cool. It adds a little bit of randomness to it as well. What we then want to go ahead and do is go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer, drag it underneath our highlights there that we created. And now we're going to get involved in what I refer to as scratch highlights and scratch shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my colors and I'm going to grab this bright tone here, the middle color in the seventh column. With our brush set to inking and the dry ink, we're going to go ahead and just add in some details in certain areas. So for example, the wood, I want to go ahead and just sort of streak in a little bit of this wood in here really light with the dry ink and just add in some nice scratchy sort of details in the wood that we can see and this is just going to elevate some of the details now what we'll also do though is go back to the layer and change the blend mode from normal and change it to add this will make them really bright so you do need to be very wary of that with your pressure and we're just going to have some fun with it just streak in some areas of the wood keeping it nice and light and just nice with your pressure. I mean, just keep it nice and easy with some extra details. And as they get further back, that's fine. But again, we're not interested in them as they get further away from us. The odd little sort of scrape here and there. And especially where we just maybe added in a little bit of those extra random brighter areas with the light on the ground, you can definitely go ahead and just emphasize some of that in the wood further back, just the odd extra little scrape here and there on the wood. Just a little extra something like that. Just nicely bring out some extra details. To me, these are just extra little things that I like to for my style. 
I'm then also going to go ahead and just run a line down this track really light with my pressure to start with draw it in a little bit straight like so and then what I'll do is I'll just switch back to my eraser tap on the eraser making sure it's the spectra brush which it is and I'll just feather out that end a little bit so it's not quite so bright down there and then also take away little random areas of color from it so just dashing through it a little bit it's fine to be in those areas there because that's where those rails were getting a little bit more love then what I'm also going to go ahead and do is go to my layers create one more new layer we're going to go to our colors I'm just going to go ahead and double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black go back to my brush which should still be the dry ink and now we're just going to scrape in some final details of the shadows so I can go ahead and you know the side of this wood here of this sleeper let's just scratch in some wood on the shadowed side especially over here you know let's really add in some fun details with this brush you can do it on top of the wood and that's fine because with highlights sometimes comes a shadow right behind it so you can add in some extra details just on the wood just nice little random scrapes across it i think they look really fun and do the same here so as the again as i keep saying sorry as the wood gets further back we're not interested in it quite so much so you don't have to do this all the way down it's just those nice little details as things are a little bit closer towards us we can just add in these extra fun little details on the wood and that one's probably a little bit too big which would say that we're probably getting now into the space where the details are getting a little bit too far away and that's fine it just helps those logs in my opinion just sort of really take a big step forward in their detail we can maybe just add in a, like a little couple of scrapes under here just right beside our tracks adding into that nice loose feel of it and just in behind as well just little scribbles little scribbles sometimes your your details although they are your fine details they don't need to be nice and pristine you know we can just add some scribbles down here right next to where our track is and i'll undo that last one we'll just make sure that's a little bit neater there and just hoping that we can elevate that track a little bit higher i'll add in a little scratch in behind now the only thing i want to adjust before we wrap this up and add the birds in is we're going to go to our layers and go to our sleeper layer i'll just tap on it for a moment and turn off the alpha lock i'm going to go to my eraser tap on the eraser and we want some uh, like the spectra we can use that still that's fine about two percent and on the end here we're just going to want to just chop off so where you added your shadow line just chop straight down and that's just going to give your blocks there the side profile that they actually desperately needed so now they actually look like blocks so we're just chopping off those pointy ends basically and as they get further back we're not bothered now they look like nice logs and they have that chopped off edge so we'll chop off this edge chop off this edge keep going down and just be careful not to chop into anywhere else they then have their final shapes so let's go ahead and add in the birds further down so we'll go ahead and go to our layers we'll just create a new layer right at the top create a new layer with the same color so we'll actually go ahead and use this one in the top left of the palette we're going to go to our brush library for you it will be under imported as well but we're going to use this flights brush it's a pain this brush i'm not going to lie how it's made you're just going to have to drag on the screen until you get say the stamp that comes on and then just grab your cursor and just move it into position where you want it and i want it to sit around here if i tap on my cursor there the size in the end was 24%, but it varies wildly depending on the pressure that you add on the screen. At this stage, I would typically keep in some final adjustments and I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna to go to my layers. I'm gonna go ahead and underneath the three glows at the top and the bird, where we've got our scratch shadows, I'm actually just gonna create one more new layer and with our color set to this one here in the top left, I'm just gonna adjust some shadows lightly. So I'm gonna to go to my brush library again, go back to painting, and the spectra brush with my brush about sort of 10 to 11 percent i'm just going to darken up this area a little bit more because it really is in the shade i want to add that nice strong amount of contrast so i'm going to undo that one a little bit more and just focus it just towards the bottom of the tree line a little bit more i want there to be a nice clear difference between the shaded side and the lighted side and then likewise here in the center of the tracks as well i'm just going to go ahead and run a line just an extra few lines of shadow here just pointing down and just adding in a little bit more contrast to the whole image but likewise i'll just add in a tiny bit over here where the forest just gets a little bit closer towards those tracks 
and then I just need to go ahead and just get rid of the excess at the end there. Just chop that out in the distance. If we go ahead and pinch with two fingers, we get full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. There's links to all my socials in the description down below. A massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. If you wanna get access to a catalog of over 60 tutorials, have your name featured in videos, sneak peeks and much, much more, there'll be a link in the description down below to my Patreon if you wanna come and join the family. And if you like this tutorial, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.